Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Total Tech. I'm here, I'm just going to show you guys today some basic bash commands. Um, so if you work in any software industry, there's a high chance that you will come across a Linux operating system. Now Linux operating systems are not exactly um, the same as Windows operating systems as most people are used to. Um, Windows is pretty common in terms of you know home PCs and you know Mac OS is also the next most common in home PCs. But really in the software industry, anything that's running on the back end is most likely, if it's not Windows, it will be on a Linux server. Now there's a lot of different flavors of Linux. Um, you know Linux has Ubuntu is pretty common. Um, you know you have Red Hat operating systems. You know CentOS like all those are all flavors of Linux. But what's common to all of those is the bash. And the bash is just a, uh, the command line in which you uh, interact with areas of the application. So I'm going to show you some very quick commands that everyone who sh works with uh, Linux of any type should know. Um, so these are personal commands that I use almost daily in my work as a senior DevOps engineer. Um, and so hopefully you guys can pick up some quick tips here. So I'm just going to open up my um, uh, WSL here. So this is the Windows Subsystem Linux. Um, and one of the first things that I'm going to do is um, first I'm going to run the clear command to clear everything. So that's a very common command that people run all the time. Clear clears everything and if I were to open up a new Ubuntu here you would see very quickly that um, it'll load again um, and the items that were above before will be right there as well. Now another command that is very very common is the ls command and this is a list command. So ls here will list everything in my home directory. Now there's several flags that I use almost constantly and one of them is ls-a so that lists everything that would be a hidden file as well and ls-lrt will show all the uh, dates and creation and size of the file as well as the read write permissions and who owns those files on the system. So ls-lrt is something that I use almost on a daily basis. Now Right now, uh, we need to know what directory we're in. So as you can see, it's a little bit hard to tell. Um, but one command that I use always, so this is command number two, is PWD, which stands for Present Working Directory. PWD. So this will tell you exactly where we are in the system. So, for instance, if I were to um, move into another folder, and then next command would be called CD, or Change Directory, I could CD into Home, and this would bring me to the home directory. Now if I run present working directory again or PWD, you can see that it now says I'm in home. And we can look at what is in the home directory by running ls-lrt. As you can see, the only folder in my home directory is the folder to C, which is my user name. So I'm gonna cd back into that folder, and now you can see I'm back in the home directory. Now, another common command that everyone should know is the mkdir, or make directory command. So I'm going to make a directory simply called temp. And this directory will now reside in the slash home slash toc um, folder. Now, it's important to note that folders don't exactly work the same way. And the concept of folders is a little bit different in Linux than uh, in a Microsoft or Windows system. I'm not going to get into the nitty gritties of that. but for the sake of this video, I'll just refer to them as folders as most people kind of view them as similar items. But in a Linux system, it's not exactly a folder as in a, a Windows system. Now if I do ls-lrt again, you will see at the very bottom that my temp folder is uh, right here. And this is my temp folder right here. So you can see that I just created that temp folder at this time right there. Now in order to uh, cd into that folder, I can cd again, start typing t, e, and then hit tab, and that will auto-complete um, the folder, and I will be in that folder now. So now if I run present working directory, you will see that I am in that folder. Another command that everyone should know is the touch command. Now touch is how you essentially create a new file. So I'm going to make a new file called test.log, and this file is going to be created in the temp folder. Now if I run ls in this folder now, you'll see that that test.log is now there. Now how exactly do I view the contents of this log? This brings us to our next command. And this command is the cat command, which is short for call attention command, I believe. So <laughs> cat test.log. 
and you can see that nothing shows up because the log is in fact empty. Now, if I were to add something into that log, we can do that through vi test.log, and here I can actually insert text. So let me hit i to insert text, and I will hit something like error test log failed some info this is just for your information now I'm gonna hit escape on my keyboard hit the colon sign hit W for write Q for quit and exclamation for force and now we're going to run cat test.log you'll see that the information is printed out now uh, for, for example what if we want to um, look at the um, you know, last line of the log. We can do this by running the tail command. And you do tail dash one test.log. And you can see that this just outputs the last line of the log. Now if I were to do tail dash two test.log, it'll output the last two lines. And so this is very useful if you have a log that is say, you know, a thousand entries and you really only want to know the last maybe 10 to 20 line items, you can run the tail command and input any item there to actually look at only a couple of the entries as opposed to catting the log which prints out everything in the log. Now another command that is pretty uh, useful with the tail command is the tail-f command. And this is useful if the log is being actively written to. So essentially what this command does is that it's opening the log in an active state. So if a service or server of some kind is writing to the log actively, you can see it pop up here. Now for demonstration purposes, I don't have another server necessarily writing to this log, but you can imagine that if, for instance, a new info is input here, by running the tail command, I can have this open and see the, the new line added in real time. Now to exit out of that, we just run Control C, and now we're back out. Now, finally, the last command that I'll go through today is the sudo command. Now, as you, may, as you might have seen earlier, that these commands are running as uh, the user toc, which is my current command. However, if for whatever, whatever reason you have multiple users on a Linux system, which is pretty common, um, you might have to do certain privileged actions, and in order to do that, you would run sudo, which is event, event, essentially means super user do and you can run any command as a root level user. For instance, you can run a cat command as a root level user. You know, it doesn't really do anything much. It will prompt you for the password of the root level user, and then it will allow you to make privileged calls and run things as a root. Now, when you do things like this, you have to be extremely careful. So for example, if I run sudo and then touch test.new.log, and run ls-lrt, you can see that the test.log is owned by toc, but the test-new.log is now owned by root. So if I were to try to modify the test-new.log as simply toc, I would not be able to do that because of the privileges. However, I could, for example, try to write here, but it is read only for me. You see here at the bottom it says read only. Now if I were to quit out of this and run this same command but with sudo, it is no longer read only. And you can see that this is essentially how sudo works. It runs things as a super user. I hope those commands have been helpful for you guys. I hope this helps you get started with bash. If you have any questions or comments, um, feel free to leave them in the comments below. If you want to know how I set up WSL in this Windows terminal or got these fancy little looking uh, kind of command line items. I have a link especially for a long tutorial on how to do that. Thank you and remember to like and subscribe.